Hello and welcome to Outdoors and That. In this video, we're gonna be looking at the different scales that you see on maps and how to measure distance. And this video is number two of the series of wilderness navigation videos. And if you haven't done your homework from the previous video, then you need to go there right now and do that homework. The outline for the course can be found at the top of the playlist, which is linked here as well. And they are essential before you continue on through the course. And the goal of this course is to provide you with good detailed information to help you get through your outdoor adventure safely and understand how not to get lost by being found on your map all the time. It'll help you go from here, here, and here, here, and here. So here I've got four different maps with four different scales, one to 25,000, one to 50,000, one to 100,000, one to 250,000. These are the most common scales that you'll see in maps. And for hiking and navigation, we're gonna be looking at the one to 25 and one to 50,000. All right, so let's start with the premise of a scale. We use scale to transfer information about distances from the real life world onto our map sheets. And to do that, we use a ratio. And so the ratio for this first map here is one to 25,000. And so what that means is that one centimeter on the map equals 25,000 centimeters on the ground. And the easy way of thinking of that is that one centimeter equals 250 meters on the ground after converting between centimeters and meters we knock off two zeros because that's our scale factor there for our one to fifty thousand map we have used what i'm going to call a larger scale which means that one centimeter on the map equals fifty thousand centimeters in real life or on the ground and so essentially what we're doing here is we are taking our snapshot of the ground and we're zooming out and so now when we look at this, one centimeter of our picture through our lens is gonna equal a larger area on the ground. With measuring distance, there's an easy way using your compass, which you have already, to measure short distances. Then if we're gonna measure longer distances, there's two other ways which I'll show you. And then the third one is a pretty guesstimation, but it's very quick and works over short distances. So with our compass, on the top and bottom side here, we can see we have a one to 25,000 uh, marks there and also one to 50,000 on the top side. So these are split up into four centimeters for the one kilometer, which is the scale factor there. And for the one to 50,000, we have two centimeters is one kilometer or one centimeter for half a kilometer. This is a one to 25,000 map. And so when I put the edge of the base plate up against the grid squares, we can see that the zero to one kilometer mark is equal to the grid square one kilometer on the map. So for this section of track here, if I was gonna measure from the vines uh, down into Hidden Valley, it's probably a little long for this technique, but I can use this and measure from the start and then if I pivot on that point I can then measure out the distance that it is there and so from that point to the track start 1.3 kilometers and so that's a way of measuring short distances very easily it's also really good if you want to measure a straight line distance um, between something so say from the edge of this hill to that track junction I could measure that at 1.4 kilometers there so that's really its benefits and on the 1 to 50,000 map it becomes a bit more useful because the scales are larger meaning you're covering more ground over less area on a map and you can yeah tend to, to do a more reasonable amount on that. The next technique is going to use the string or any piece of string the thing that we want to make sure though is that our string is not very stretchy and so this one is quite static and that means that it's going to be much easier to use and what we can do we'll line up our string with the start of our track and I'm going to start from where the knot is 
and then you can just lay your string across where the track is going and over this process we can work out how far it is and keep doing this so to our track junction with the hidden valley then it's that much worth of string and I'm just going to use my grid squares here to measure that out so again we don't want to pull that out real tight just have it so it's in a straight line and we can see that if we count the grid squares so we've got one two three and a touch of our grid square so three kilometers and 300 meters is a pretty good measurement for that section of track another way you can measure your distance is using a piece of paper and a pen and so if you put the corner of your paper up against your track and mark the points where the track is moving off and then pivot your piece of paper on that point and mark your way along and then again measure out your marks of your grid squares and so as you can see it's a little bit slower but we have 1.3 uh, or 4 kilometers probably 3 kilometers to get to that mark which was about this bend in the track there so it's not as neat not quite as tidy but it is another technique that works and it's often better if you're using a, um, a much straighter lines or if you wanted to do long straight lines between say two um, two locations and say the entrance to the valley there and the top of this hill then marking that out on your piece of paper and spreading that across the grid lines gives you a really easy way to do longer distances the final way which we have which is pretty rough and ready but does work okay is to just look at how many grid boxes we're crossing over so we've got one box we're going diagonally across that box and then a little box and the best part of this one so if we kind of add that up we've got about 1.8 kilometers on a diagonal plus 300 meters so that's about 2.1 then add this section and we can see that's probably uh, 0.4 so that's 2.5 and then here we have the best part of a kilometer maybe a bit under and so again we're going to get to around that 3.3 3.4 kilometers for the distance there and that it works well enough uh, for most cases to just kind of guesstimate and add up the distance over time so that's our four methods of measuring distance using the base plate using our string which is often attached to a compass a piece of paper and then just guessing and doing an estimation using the grid squares so if you've already forgotten what I said about scale and how to work out the scales of the maps, well, the answer to that can be found on the key. And so all maps have a key with information about the scale on it. So this one's on the back of that. For this one, we have our key information is just on the first inside page. The key of a map is gonna give you all the information about the symbols signage and colors that are used on the maps and they do differ between map makers and map brands but generally there's some common rules between them and then there's some things that vary a little here we can see that red lines that are solid are indicating main roads and again on this map we're getting red lines that are solid are indicating main roads then when we get to dotted lines that's going to indicate that it's a minor track and it's gonna be an unsealed road or unpaved uh, road. Then we have other information for boundaries, railways, road tunnels, etc. So that's all pretty similar between. So as we move down our keys, we start to get into the more detailed information for the purposes of these map. And so here our key is mostly made up of things that are gonna be useful for recreation users. Whereas over here we have information about power transmission, cableways, pipelines, etc. We also have a lot more information about waterways and water bodies on our New South Wales maps. One of the things which I really like about the New South Wales map are these colour block sections here. So in the adventure map, they're just using colours to indicate the land use type. So whether it's national park or nature reserve or catchment area, etc like that over here we're using our color blocks particularly the green ones 
to look at the amount of crown cover or the, the cover of the crowns of the trees. And so our dark green is 80 to 100% crown cover. Then we go into lighter shades for less and less cover. And then our pine forest is indicated by our little pine trees. And so that provides a lot of useful information when walking through a landscape about the vegetation types that you're going to encounter. And that information is not really included on this adventure map. If we were walking off track, this map is not going to have nearly as much useful information for off track walking, both because of the contour interval of 20 meters and this vegetation information, whereas over here we get a contour interval of 10 meters plus lots of information about the forest and vegetation types and the wetlands and swamps and waterway information as well. In our key we have our scale information and here we have uh, little marks indicating 100 meters so five of those little marks is going to be half a kilometer then one kilometer and two kilometers there and so our two kilometers is going to equal eight centimeters. So four centimeters to one kilometer for this map. The other useful information that's right near our scale here is the contour interval of 10 meters. So that's provided there. On our one to 50,000 map, we have our map scale. One centimeter equals 50,000 centimeters on the ground. And then we have our scale bar. So again, showing us that here, one centimeter is gonna equal 500 meters, two centimeters for a kilometer. And then our boxes are conveniently set at two centimeters or indicating one kilometer from one side of the box to the other. The contour interval is located over here. So we can see contour interval 20 meters on this map as opposed to the 10 meters on this map. And so we're starting to lose detail between those two maps. Now the one on the left is our New South Wales government map. And so that provides topographic and cartographic information for all of New South Wales. Whereas our map here is an adventure map produced by rooftops. And we can really see the difference in the information provided here. So for our map on the left, we have information about Mount Mugga Mugga. It's got a road up it and it's got a quarry. But then over here, we see that we have Mount Mugga Mugga, it's got the road, but then it gives us extra inf information, no access to the summit. And it's also providing us with the name of the nature reserve, whereas over here, we don't have a name for the nature reserve. And so this extra information is gonna be useful for people who wanna undertake recreation activities, whereas on our map on the left, we're just getting information that's gonna be useful for all types of users of this map. To demonstrate the difference between our two map scales, I've got two sections of Canberra here, and our map on the bottom is the one to 50,000 scale, and our map on this side is the one to 25,000 scale. And so in our map here, one to 25,000, one centimeter on our map, is going to equal 250 meters on the ground. On this map, one centimeter on the map is going to equal 500 meters on the ground. And when we look at our boxes here, we can see that one box is gonna equal one kilometer. So in this map, the boxes are four centimeters apart. And in this map, they are two centimeters apart. So they still equal one kilometer. And so when we look at this area, which is the same on both maps of the Red Hill, we can see we start to lose detail out of our map and particularly looking at the contour lines become harder to distinguish the smaller features uh, in there as opposed to when we're looking at our contour line features through here. So for hiking, the finer detail that you can have, the better it is going to be for doing navigation, especially if you're working off track, because you're going to see small features like these ripples in the contour lines there, which are much harder to pick up on this map here because of the difference in the scale. So now I've got our 1 to 100,000 map and 1 to 250,000 map. 
And so in our 1 to 100, we now have 1 centimetre grid squares, and that 1 centimetre equals 1 kilometre. But we can see, again, we're starting to lose detail, especially about contour line information, and that's starting to become more difficult. If we're just following tracks, which is the purpose of this map, to cover a large area of the overland track and provide some information about going up and down hills, but not designed for off-track walking, then it is sufficient to have a 1 to 100,000 map. If we look on our map on the left here, this is 1 to 250,000, and the grid squares have changed size, they're much larger, and in this map we're having one grid square is equaling 5 kilometres squared. And so again, we've lost a lot of detail for our contour lines, and the intervals between the contour lines are much bigger. And so the interval between these contour lines is 50 metres rather than the standard 10 or 20 metres, which you might get on a 1 to 100,000 and a 1 to 25,000 maps. This map is really good for providing you with an overview of the landscape and for navigating if you're moving about really quickly, but it's not going to provide you with the detail that you would need to hike through this area with confidence, especially if you were trying to hike off track through. Your task for video two is to use your 1 to 25,000 map, which you found in week one's video of a nature reserve near you, and map out a walk that you can complete, and then measure the distance of that walk using the techniques that we have just watched. Thanks for watching before. Outdoors Nat. Check out my next video on contours and land features in this wilderness navigation series, and have a great and safe outdoor adventure.